sewing friends. It is so wonderful to see your smiling faces here again. You know, I always pretend that I can see your smiling faces. Uh, for those of you, you might just be jumping here for the first time or long time followers will already know that on the 3rd of February this year, 2023, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer to be exact, which is a very aggressive and very invasive kind of cancer. And so I made uh, this video here um, sharing that news with you. Uh, and since then, I have actually not made any more YouTube videos. Uh, I released a few that I'd pre-recorded, but nothing, I've not recorded a single video since then. It was when I recorded that video, I was starting chemotherapy the next day. Uh, and so since then, I have been through five and a half months of the hardest chemotherapy. I've had two surgeries, I've had radiation, I've just had quite a journey through there. And of course, this video, I want to update you on that journey that since then, where I am now, and of course, what the future holds, because unfortunately, my journey is not over. And I am just like in that video, about to start chemotherapy again tomorrow. But let's catch up on what that looks like. Uh, obviously show you my new hairdo and what it means for me ahead and this channel as well. Well, I don't know about you, but 2023 for me has been the longest year of my life. Uh, long and short in that obviously going through this journey has, it's felt like an eternity, but at the same time it felt, it's felt like I've almost done nothing at all because I've been quite sick for a lot of it. So first up, let's catch up. And I wanted to say hi and like <laughs> just to, to, to show you where I am now and I'm right now in between um, treatments uh, you know as I said I've been through many different treatments so far and about to start another one I have currently right now as of this day feeling the very best that I have felt this entire year today so today is a good day um, let me catch you up on the story uh, so far um, as you know I made uh, that video where I um, you know, released and told you all about uh, my diagnosis of breast cancer and oh goodness that was still the hardest video that I've ever had to make. <laughs> um, so hard and uh, first before we get into my story because part of it is that is that video. Uh, I know so many of you have been here for such a long time watching and the amount of you that reached out the the outpour that I received from that video and the the love, the comments, the emails, the letters. When I say letters, I mean ginormous amounts of love and outpour and support that I have received from you was, I have absolutely no words to how much love I felt um, at that time from you. And I cannot even thank you enough. Um, also your, generous um, donations at that time to help with my treatments was, f I, I try and keep this as short as I can, but far surpassed anything that I even could imagine. So I really want to send my thanks and love back to you um, for it. It meant so many things. Those unit following along know it meant I could have uh, radiation in my hometown, um, not have to like live somewhere else for um, weeks on end, a month more. Uh, it also meant I didn't have to stress and worry about, um, you know, business as usual. I could uh, lower, say, you know, my stress and workload on life and not have to worry about it. I had the opportunity to step back a little bit um, with security, you know, knowing that I, that I could do that and just focus on me and my healing and recovery and you have no idea how much that meant to me. I would actually keep these letters and I would on purpose not open some and keep them by my bed. So on the days that I was not feeling really good at all, I had some lovely news to read. Your filled with your support, your kind words, your encouraging words, your survivor stories, your, uh, your like your own sewing stories and just knowing how much I've touched all your lives as well. This much, this much, this many was just um, kept me going through some of the, the darkest days that I had. And without trying to dwell too much, I cannot thank you enough for that. So thank you. Oh, so where to start? My goodness. 
Um, after that video, the last time that we caught up real time, obviously those of you following along in my story, I have a place where I've been updating you and I'll share that down below. Um, you know, know it, but this is the first time we've sat down to chat about it and I'll keep this as brief as I can. Um, all the details are in those um, quite detailed stories that I've written along the way. Um, um, so they'll be all linked down below. Uh, but chemotherapy was first up for me. That was the main treatment uh, avenue to try and um, shrink and reduce and hopefully make my cancer disappear entirely. And so I was on um, an AC mix um, of chemotherapy for triple negative breast cancer. I say these things because I know actually a lot of you, unfortunately, have been diagnosed or going through the same thing, even just after me reaching out and telling me your stories is heartbreaking at the same time, but also knowing that I guess we're not alone in this. There are many of us going through this same journey. And I found a lot of encouragement and strength reading your survivor stories in here as well. So hopefully this might be a little bit more for if you're also going through this at this time. And so chemotherapy was the AC mix. So the Red Devil um, and uh, I had the, the works, the works. Um, they gave me, you know, full strength of everything, the extras, the everything, because I'm, you know, young, fit and healthy. They gave me the deluxe treatment with the chemotherapy. Um, and so it was five and a half months. Um, at first it was every two weeks on a certain set of drugs. And then the last three months was every single week. So I'd spend an entire day in the hospital, um, hooked up to, you know, chemotherapy drugs. I had surgery to have a little, um, port cath installed so that I could receive the infusions, um, easier because it was not easy to get into my veins and doing it so frequently. It was, uh, one level of stress that was just, um, too much. Mm. So um, it was really, that time was the absolute hardest time of my life. There are times, days I just, I couldn't even get out of bed. I was sick all the time. I was fatigued beyond anything I'd experienced in my whole life. I became a real sick person. And of course it took all of my hair as well. I, at first it was obviously the hair on my head and then as the um, you know five months went on by the um, end of it at the very end I had not a single eyelash or eyebrow left at all um, it's completely bald and so you know it's quite hard to look at yourself um, at that time you look like a sick person right and you know it's it's really tough and going through that um, that time was definitely the absolute hardest time um, on my journey so far Mine started with the heaviest and at least I think each stage is getting a little bit lighter and lighter, at least for me and why I can at least smile uh, now. So after chemotherapy, um, you know, I then had a little break to recover <laughs> because my body was so wiped out um, from from that. If any of you have been close to someone going through chemo, you know what that might be might mean and look like. And I had all sorts of different um, complications and I still have neuropathy now even, um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, after that came surgery. I had a lumpectomy, uh, so it just ain't, they took just the lump. Um, and the surgery is, you know, it sounds quite easy, but I think it was a little bit harder than I expected. Um, I suppose preparing yourself for what you might look like, although you had the easy small surgery that's just a lumpectomy, of course, instead of taking the whole breast or anything like that. Um, what you're left looking like afterwards, um, you know, you're sort of ready for it mentally, but seeing it is quite a bit different and just getting used to it. So a little bit lopsided now, um, but that's nothing that padded bras can't fix. Um, I have some lymph nodes taken out, um, which is still a little bit sore, but um, all's healing up um, well so far. I recovered from surgery fairly well. I was doing, you know, exercises, stretches and all sorts of things right. So um, it just took a little while, but after the surgery, um, a few weeks is probably when I really started to feel almost like my, like started to get that grasp of what feeling like myself was like again, because it had been some time after chemo and then, you know, surgery to get sort of that out of my system and my body was detoxing and healing. And for the first time I was feeling, starting, starting to feel like myself again. And it was really, really nice to oh, kind of feel like there was light at the end of the tunnel and like this dark cloud of horrible, 
treatments and sickness was was there might be an end to it and then of course we had the results from the surgery and uh, that come in which was good news in that it hadn't spread anywhere to my lymph nodes which was really um, good news um, to have those results um, but it didn't really shrink the tumor as much as they'd hoped or liked my, my body didn't respond to the chemo as well as might have been expected and um, at this point is when that another round of chemotherapy was recommended and this oh boy that really hit me hard then because at that time I was expecting to have you know my radiation treatment you know some weeks a month or whatever it was of radiation didn't know at that time and that would have been the end right all that ahead and I'm just feeling like just starting to feel like I could live life and actually do things in a day and feel like myself and to be told that you know more chemotherapy was recommended really crushed me and it took me quite a while to feel okay about that or just wrap my brain around it I guess because for me that was the hardest part of my journey so far and to think like more of that was like but anyway we'll circle back to that in a minute because after that a couple of weeks again of healing in between treatments to get my body well enough to be able to handle each new procedure then was radiation um i feel like radiation was a walk in the park compared to all the other treatments that I did um, previously um, in that it was just easier. It was every day, so it's quite busy. Like I have to go in and go to the, the center, which was here in town, which is amazing. Um, thanks to you guys. Um, it was, you know, super, super good um, in that in that respect. But just busy is in every day and lots of other medical appointments. And like my life's been overtaken by medical appointments. And um, but yes, it was easy. I didn't burn too much. I didn't really get any broken skin. Um, so I think I got off really well. I was moisturizing like crazy at that time. And yeah. And then they even actually threw me a uh, finishing party <laughs> um, for radiation. They put the disco lights on and everything. It was um, it was quite fun. So they were really amazing there. Actually, everyone through my entire, from the, the, the nurses, the chemo ward um, here, they've been like, they are some special people. Like, Really, they are. They're so kind and so amazing to take you through that journey. They were just wonderful for me, um, to me. My surgeons were wonderful, did an amazing job. And like everyone at the radiation clinic, I just, they've been really, really amazing. I think it takes really a certain kind of beautiful human being to put themselves in those roles, caring for people like in those situations, because it's, oh, that's a, they've been wonderful and so radiation's finished and i've um, been healing a few weeks and so this is me now three weeks post radiation and i think three months post chemo so this is my hair growth for three months post chemo it's getting to the point where i can almost part it uh, my vintage sewing school members have sort of seen a progression of my hair and um, at first i was excited just to have a, a buzz cut looking thing now i'm like it's, it's almost a pixie cut I can all right I went for my first haircut and it was pretty exciting <laughs> so it was two weeks ago all I did I didn't take any length off the top of course they just neatened up you know around the ears and the, the the back of the nape just to you know tidy it up but it was really nice experience to start feeling again more and more like myself again you know going to get my hair done a haircut like having a hairdryer on my hair. I haven't experienced that since March. Small things like that just bring a little bit of joy and make me think that there is end to this journey eventually. But unfortunately that end is not anytime soon. So um, I am now here and just like in the last video that I made for you, this video again, I'm about to start chemo again tomorrow. So um, I guess in short, I should mention that uh, yes, they've so far as they know have got all the cancer and it's all been successful thus far this round of chemo is a kind of extra a bonus an insurance policy a just in case it's because the chemo like the, the chemo I was on before it my body didn't really respond as well and so it didn't shrink as much as they would have liked to have really seen and so it means it wasn't quite as effective as it they were hoping to be in which case this chemo is in case any other little random cells have spread through my bloodstream or anything like that that still might be there that you know that I didn't shrink with the first one that it will get all those and as I said it was quite challenging for me to hear this and know this but um, I would rather do this once do it really hard do it all the way 
because I only want to do this once and hopefully um, I can prevent this from ever happening again and that's what this really is for. And so the next round of chemo that I'm starting now is an oral form of chemo, so tablets, in which case it's a, I guess to say, a bit of a lighter kind of chemo. And so I won't be in hospital every day. I take tablets at home, so I won't have like weekly hospital visits hooked up to IVs. So I don't have that. And it shouldn't knock me as much as that last round did. I mean, the first round I could barely function as a human, like I couldn't have done that or lived on my own. I needed help like all the time of different things physically and obviously emotionally as well. Um, so this chemo won't be as bad. I won't be 100% of course, it's still chemo and there'll be lots of things that I have to look out for. Um, I didn't end up in emergency with no infections or anything like that in the first time around. So um, that was really, really great and positive. And everyone said how well I got through it, you know, strong and determination. And, you know, I think it's that will underneath everything that gets you there. Um, this one, a little bit the same. Um, I am, intend to hopefully try and continue more of life at least um, as much as I can um, and, you know, try and figure out who I am uh, now after all of this, because this kind of journey is um, something that really shifts your perspective of life around and what, um, what you want it to be, what you want to do. And so I guess leads me to where we're at now. Although today I know I feel oh, like I not quite my old self because that old self of me doesn't exist anymore, but you know, almost. And I've been doing my vintage sewing school, um, you know, all well, of my content and work there, of course, that's been my focus for um, over this time. And I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to um, to just focus on that as um, as my means of bringing me joy and happiness um, as well through this time, which has been wonderful. And obviously no YouTube videos or anything else because I've cut out everything that wasn't my absolute necessities list. And well, I mean, I have to see how I go on this next chemo and I'll just you know, see how it makes me feel. Everybody's different, so I don't know how I'll react. Um, and I will see what happens. But for the meantime, there will be no new YouTube videos still um, for a while uh, because I'll just see how chemo um, affects me and see when I'm ready. Uh, I want to come back with, you know, just like I'm making this video today, right? With big smiles and enthusiasm, um, just like you're used to because that's how I like to share my um, content and be with you um, is in that kind of mind frames, uh, mindset, mind frame. Uh, so, you know, I, I will be coming back to YouTube um, as to when, I don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. I have the next round of chemo ahead of me is for five to six months is a full course. Um, we'll see if I can manage that long, how it goes. So we'll just see. I really am so grateful to have you all here, um, new and old um, followers here. Um, it's really meant the world to me. Um, you know, I know you still watch my videos now and still following along on the po on the videos that we re revisit every week um, here because I've made so many great videos. It's really been great to revisit the archives and continue to, to just look at, you know, because sewing is sewing, right? With all these skills that we've got and share this journey with you um, means a lot to me and why I wanted to make this video to share my um, journey where I am at with you as well. So I didn't want to fill my social medias with anything, you know, to be all about my cancer journey. That's not what it's about. So um, those of you that watched that first update video know that I have another place. Um, it's hosted on GoFundMe um, because at the time it's what I was... Um, you know, also opening channels for. Um, and so I've kept it open there because that's where my, basically my story lies. All the details about everything that I'm going through and, and posts as, as they happen are all there. So you can still link there. And I keep that open for the time being because um, I want to share that with you. That was my, my promise. So I will continue to do that and share um, where I'm at real time. And that's where you'll find that information. Please know um, it's hosted on GoFundMe, of course. And um, as I mentioned before, the outpour of everything and including the generosity there, I have no words to how, like, uh, lost lost for words on um, your generosity and what that meant for me at the time and, and still does to give me the, the time um, and luxury to focus on me and my healing. And so I thank you enough. So no donations 
more are required like needed required for my medical treatments or anything like that ahead so please know that no more are, are needed at all or and you don't need to do anything to see any of the posts you can just log on and see all of the posts all the content all the time to follow along on the journey um, to continue doing that so uh, that'll be linked down below um, to follow along. Otherwise, we follow along here every week um, in the post feature. We will uh, revisit some uh, old content and re revisit all of that to rejig our skills. And I'll have stories and maybe some short form content um, popping up here and there as well. And for our longer form YouTube videos, we will come when I when I come back. I will see you again soon for all of that. And thank you so much for all being here. Your love and support really has made all the difference to my journey and why I can sit here as I do now in the state that I that I am. So being so well is because part in part because of you and because of the you know wonderful people around me in my real life as well, whom like have been my absolute lifelines, my my um, family, my um, in like my parents, my in-laws, my partner, they're just, you know, that's uh, in my private life. Um, but you are also part of it. So thank you. I cannot enough. Um, thank you. So as I continue my journey, I will um, keep you updated and see you soon. My sewing friends, happy sewing. Bye.